Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to be diagnosing a faulty alternator, but before we get started, just want to apologize for my voice. I'm a little bit congested right now, so my voice is a little bit hoarse, so hopefully it comes through clear on the video. So just try to ignore that. But what we're going to be looking at here, we're going to head outside in a minute. We have a vehicle that had an alternator that had failed. New alternator was put in shortly after putting the new alternator in. It looked like that one failed as well, leaving the car stranded. So we have the car outside. So what I'm gonna be doing now is picking up this video as I'm gonna be diagnosing what the issue was, what failed, and that way we can get it fixed. Let's head outside and get started. We're gonna start off by taking our multimeter. We're gonna turn it to 20 volts DC, switch that on. And then we'll head over here to the car battery. Now with the car not running, we're gonna test the battery by putting our leads on the negative and then the positive. And as you can see, we're at 13.4. Normally anything over 12.5 is good. So we know that the battery itself is good. Let's head inside here to the car and let's start it. Okay, there we go. And you'll notice right there, the little battery light is on down here next to the check engine. That means we're having a problem with our charging system, which is not a good sign. Usually that pertains to the alternator. So we'll check the alternator. First thing you want to look at is the belt. Make sure that the belt is obviously not broken. In this case, it's fine. Make sure the tension's good so it's not slipping. If it's slipping, that can cause issues. This one looks fine. Everything looks to be working good. So now we'll head over here to this alternator, which is a brand new alternator. And now what we're going to do is we're going to test the battery with the engine running to see if it's getting any charge from the alternator. And we're actually dropped. Now we're down to 12.65. It should be up around 13.5 to 14.5 or so. So this is showing us right now that there's an issue with the charge coming from the alternator. So we'll connect here onto the alternator with our positive, and then we'll take our black lead here on the multimeter and we'll ground this on the vehicle itself. So we'll find a good ground right here, ground that, and we'll see what the voltage is, is looking at here as we're testing it right off the alternator itself. And as you can see here, we're still at the 12.6. So the alternator is not giving any charge here because it's just the battery voltage that we're looking at. And you can see it right there. Yeah, just regular. And then here we are still, um, still have the, uh, the battery light on. We'll accelerate, take it up to around two to 3,000 RPMs. Normally your voltage should go up when you're accelerating. Let's head under the hood and check. So here we are accelerating, nothing, it's, it's actually dropping. So now we're down to 12.5, we're getting zero, zero uh, charge from the alternator, from the voltage regulator coming in here. So that's not good. So I'm gonna take the negative off the battery here. You're gonna wanna disconnect it. And um, we're gonna be checking the fuses here. You have this little fuse there, but the one that we're looking at is underneath here inside the fuse box. Usually they're one, about 100 to 125 amps. So let's see what's under here. If you pop the lid off, we'll take a look here on the bottom of the lid. There's a diagram. We're gonna look for the one for alternator. And you'll see it right here. It's a 125 amp, which is right here. You can see it's written on the top. So let's take a look here at this fuse link right here. And actually it looks good. Everything looks good, no breaks. Okay, we'll put this back. And next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna head over here to the alternator. Let's take a look here. You have this harness that plugs into the voltage regulator. We're gonna take that off and inspect that for any damage, but you definitely wanna make sure that the battery is left disconnected. So we'll leave that disconnected. And then we'll head over here because sometimes you can have broken wires that could be hindering the connection there, powering the voltage regulator. So let's take this off. We'll inspect it. This side here looks good. Let's check the bottom. And looking here, you can see I'll get a close up. We got some copper showing on the left and the middle wires. And looking, it looks like it's just surface. It looks like it's just the, the insulation on the wire. The copper itself is not broken, as you can see. That's all intact. So you can fix that if you want, but that's not hindering anything. But let's take a look here at the connection itself on the other end where it plugs into the alternator. That's all clean. Looks good. All right. So. Let me just recap what just happened. So basically what we did is we tested the battery with the engine off to see that the battery was, was good, which it was. 
Then we started the vehicle. Now, if you noticed when we started the vehicle, the little battery light was on on the dash, and that doesn't mean that your battery's low. What that means is there's an issue with your charging system. Your alternator charges your battery as, it, as it's running, um, and basically what happened is since that's not functioning properly, that light came on, so that's another indication that there's a problem with that. So what we did is we then tested the battery with the engine running, and normally the voltage should go from the 12 or 13 volts of the battery up to around 13.5 or 6 to 14.5 or 6. We saw it actually went down a little bit, didn't go up at all, so that was another red flag. We checked the fusible length, the fuse for the alternator. That looked fine, because a lot of times if you look at that, that could be your problem if that fuse is gone, that 100 or 125 amp fuse. In this case, it was a 125. That was fine, so then that took us to the alternator itself. When we checked the voltage regulator, we saw that we were just getting the battery voltage. Normally, you should be getting around 14 volts off of that, so we weren't getting anything, so that was the indication that we have a problem with the alternator. If, if that was going to be fine and we were still having the issue, then I was going to check the battery connection to the alternator. Sometimes those can be broken or the link could be loose. That could be your problem. But since we went right to the alternator with the issue, we knew that our problem was there. So the next thing that I did is I checked the harness that plugs into the alternator, into the voltage regulator, to see, make sure that that had a good connection. There was no damage. We did see two of the wires did have some exposed copper, but as we just saw, they weren't broken. It was just the insulation had a crack in it there. If they were broken completely or there were some faults with that harness, the next thing I would have done is either fixed it or replaced that harness. But since all that checked out, we're pointing strictly at that alternator. Even though it is a new alternator, there's an issue with it. So we're going to now take it back to Advance Auto. They can put it on their alternator uh, machine that'll test it, their tester. Let's see how that turns out. If that shows that it's failing, then I'm going to be getting a replacement from them, and then we'll put that in and continue on with this video and see how that pans out. Connecting to this tester, they'll be able to see if the alternator I brought back is defective or not. So after running some tests on it here, you can see on the screen it says failed. They actually ran three tests on this alternator to make sure each time it came back as a fail. So we're getting our new one here. We'll pull this out and I'm gonna install it. So we have it all in place now. You wanna make sure that your belt tension is good. If it's too tight, you're gonna put strain on the pulley. If it's too loose, it can slip and cause issues. We have it completely tensioned good. The plug is all, everything is connected. So now we're gonna head over here. We're gonna reconnect the battery. So we'll take our, our negative battery cable. We'll get that secured back on so we can test it and see how everything looks now with this new alternator in place. Let's start the vehicle. And okay, right there, the battery light went out already. That's looking very good. Let's hunt underneath the hood and do some testing on it. But uh, that's a good start. So let's connect to the battery. And as you see here, we're looking at 14.3, which is how it should look with the engine running because the alternator is is uh, doing some charging there with the voltage. So that looks good. So next, let's head over here. We'll connect to the alternator itself like we did before. And we're gonna test it again. See how that looks. So let's head over here. And with the engine running, we're gonna accelerate. And the voltage, as you can see, is going up as we accelerate, which is what it should be doing. As you remember at the beginning with the other one, it wasn't doing a thing, but uh, it's looking good. Everything's looking good with this one. All right, well, that wraps up this video on diagnosing a faulty alternator. As we saw in this video, sometimes you buy new parts, and it can wind up being a lemon or faulty part, and in those cases, you're going to have to diagnose it. In this case here, it was the alternator. But I do have to say, in the years that I've been working on cars, I've probably only had faulty car parts enough to count on one hand. It's not that common, but as we saw, it can happen. Uh, I purchased that particular alternator from Advance Auto. They were very good to test it and replace it because that alternator was expensive. It was around $350 for that alternator with a discount. So I didn't want to have to be buying another one without being able to exchange it, but they were really good about working through that. So I hope that this video was informative for you. I hope if you're dealing with any issues with your alternator or with your, the, the charge of your car being out of whack, I hope that this helped you with that. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. 
So please like this video, subscribe to this channel as I'm constantly posting how-to videos with car repair and other do-it-yourself videos. And I'll see you next time.